Good evening and welcome to the Cover One Buffalo Podcast. You are joining your normal host, Greg Thompson, along with the OG, Eric Turner. Eric, how are we doing? What's going on, Greg? Happy to jump on here real quick. Yeah, yeah. Just thought it was fun. A lot of fun stuff going on on Twitter today. Thank you guys for everybody who's given uh, feedback on the Dream Offseason article. Got some great feedback there. But we had an interesting tweet that came out here and wanted to kind of talk about it just because of the connections that that we've seen. And, you know, it it came out from a source, Jenna Lane, who's the uh, ESPN NFL Nation reporter down in the NFC South. She covers the Bucks, but it had a little bit of info on a former player for the Bills, Cordy Glenn, along with Trey Turner, just talking about the guard market and two people that are being shopped around in NFL circles. Uh, Glenn, we already know about probably going to get released if they can't find a home. And honestly, I will be surprised if they find a team that wants to take on that contract. But more interestingly, Trey Turner is a 26-year-old guard, one of the guys who was drafted while Bean was there and being coached while McDermott was there, has been to five straight Pro Bowls at right guard and just a really interesting prospect. So somebody that, you know, if we've been kicking around the idea, we're not sure if we want to pay the market it's going to take to get a Joe Thune and now information coming out that Brandon Scherf is going to get franchise tagged. Just thought it was interesting to want to get on and talk about it. And you had a couple interesting, uh, you know, clips that you you came across on Twitter and some interesting PFF data for Turner. What, what are your thoughts on him, Eric? No, I uh, I went back real quick, watched a few games uh, on Turner because um, he's obviously a guy that, you know, has been one of the better guards in the leagues the last couple of years. I know he's dealt with some injuries, and you'll talk about that later along with his contract. But, I mean, the guy has really played well when he's in the lineup. Um, what I liked about the three games that I watched last year, um, you know, when he was playing with Kyle Allen, you got to keep that in mind. And I'm going to bring up some of uh, pro football focus stats because – he gave up six sacks last year. Let's keep that in mind. Um, he gave up six sacks, as you can see down here on the right, uh, four QB hits, 20 QB hurries. Um, so obviously he did give up some pressures overall, but he's playing with a guy like you know Kyle Allen in that offense uh, under North Turner. So some of that is going to fall on him because obviously those young quarterbacks are going to hold on to the ball uh, for a good amount of time. But what I did like about him, I think primarily he's a run blocker, and he's kind of similar to Quentin Spain. Uh, whereas he is um, kind of a, a mauler. He's got that nastiness in the run game. Uh, but as you can see in some of those clips I posted on Greg's timeline, he's got a little nastiness in the passing game too. And um, I like his, his quickness and his explosiveness out of his stance laterally, which is something that Quentin Spain really struggled with last year when guys you know, came across his face real quick from a wide alignment. Um, so I like that with him. I liked, obviously, in those clips you'll see him, he clears passing lanes. He's got 34-inch arms, and he clears those passing lanes, which is something, obviously, when you look at the Bills' offensive line, that is something that Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott and, and Brian Dable wanted to bring in, guys that can not only stick the blocks but clear passing lanes when they do try to stunt uh, against Josh Allen because Josh Allen and that offense are what? They're in empty a lot. And so when you hit five-man protections, you've got to have those big guys that can not only stick the blocks but also clear guys in the passing lanes and clear them from the QB spot. So those were a few things I liked. Uh, taking a brief look at him real quick. Uh, but obviously, I'd like to dig in a little more. If they do sign him, obviously, you know I'm going to dig in a little more film. But overall, I like what he brings. And I honestly didn't realize he – I mean, five Pro Bowls, straight Pro Bowls, that's that's pretty amazing. And, yes, I would love to have him on the offensive line, whether it's at either guard position, because that's one thing that the guys that are in the interior offensive line do is that they have that versatility. So, yes, I would love to add him. And so what are your, what are your numbers? What What type of numbers are you projecting for him? Uh, if he does get a new contract here soon. Well, the interesting part is, and you touched on it here, you know, some of the archetypes that the Bills go through before, although he's not the tallest guy, 34-inch arms, actually ran a crazy 40, 4.9, so he was interesting. He earned a contract extension, so he had already something coming back from Carolina, and any team that acquires him would be taking on two more years. The initial one is at about $9 million because there is a roster bonus that we would owe him with an $8.5 million base salary. Um, there's also some numbers that you'll see the following year, $11 million with another $5 million roster bonus. And I, I think that it's going to be – you know, one way to be able to look at that is that I think he's going to want a little something. So I played around with some of the numbers. I think that you could do a two-year extension with a 
make it look like 26 million, but really it's a $10 million signing bonus up front. And then you would end up adding two more $8 million salary years on to the end of that. And what it ends up turning it into is a four year deal where he's making, you know, 12 million, 14 million, 10 and a half, 10 and a half. Uh, so pretty palatable at the end. And you're only talking about age 27, 28, 29, and 30. Definitely very doable for a guard. Um, and obviously, a guy coming up five straight Pro Bowls is the kind of guy you would best invest in. And that nine and a half million, $10 million range is a bit more palatable than the 13 to 14 million you were hearing with Thune and probably the 15 to 16 million you were hearing with Brandon Scherf. And, and I think it's one of the rare areas where bringing in a guy like that really makes it a little more palatable to give another run of Cody Ford at right tackle. I know both of us have been kind of easing into that idea a little bit yeah. more <laughs> in that maybe we need to brace ourselves for a move, even though we'd rather not see movement and let a guy hunker down. If you're going to do that, one of the ways to do that is to put a 26 year old five time pro bowler next to him. And then you're going to be able to really see what are what is his upside and full capability? So if you're going to go that route, that's one where I'd be a little bit more open to it. No, I definitely and I, you know I know as you said we've been talking about you know moving forward to guard and you know if they get a guy like this and put him next to Cody Ford, I'm open to you know obviously yeah. keeping him out wide because in the end there's still versatility among that offensive line. Um, it's funny you brought up you know kind of comparisons and talking quickly about his. Uh, about Trey Turner's athletic profile. You know, I looked up his, uh, you know, five comparable players based on their athletic profile on playerprofiler.com. Here are two of the names that came up. Shaq Mason, Joe Looney, and Brandon Scherf. So you see <laughs> those are the type of players that you, you mentioned, you know, those kind of guys. So um, I do think he projects well uh, in, in the Bills offense either at either guard position, same with Feliciano. Um, and having a guy that um, helps so well, helps his adjacent offensive linemen so well, um, will definitely help Ford's game altogether. So he won't have to worry so much about that inside lane being um, open when he kick slides wide because he's trying to overcompensate or overset versus those wide rushers. He knows he has help to his side. So um, having a guy like Turner is, is good. He's kind of like what I called Mitch Morse. He's that uh, eraser, that sheriff inside that is very good with his help technique. If there's no one over him or if that de defensive lineman that disappears and rushes away from him, he immediately finds his next target and clears that passing lane, as I said. So I think, uh, yeah, it could buy Ford a little more time at tackle. But in the end, I mean, uh, for the value that you get in your guard, I understand it's going to be it's gonna be pretty pricey. It, it, with all things considered and what they're spending on offensive line right now, um, it would be pricier bringing a guy like Turner in. But you know darn well that Brandon Bean's going to do everything in his power to upgrade um, that guard position, whether it's by sliding, you know, forward inside or getting a free agent off the street. Um, it, it's going to happen. And, I mean, we all – we pretty much say it every day. We all do have a lot of good of trust in Bean. So um, I do trust whether, it, you know, it, it's – Turner or someone else that he's going to bring in someone that's going to take that starting position. And a good way to look at it is you now get a full season with a Pro Bowl presence next to him. And in the clips that that are out there on the timeline show how fantastic Turner is at finding work and coming over to help and being that support system, like you said, yeah. that sheriff there to, to be able to do that. What a better way to be able to truly decide, hey, is this the long-term position for Ford? Because now you can make a fully informed decision. And at the end of 2020, John Feliciano and Ty Insecki's contracts yeah. come up. The, that's $10 million that comes off the cap. All of a sudden, now we had a full season to say, hey, we put a Pro Bowl guy next to him. He just is not going to be able to deal with that speed, but we think he can play guard. All of a sudden, you let Feliciano walk. You have the $10 million that freed up there. You can go shopping for that right tackle next to Turner, or if we filled a bunch of holes here, or depending on where the draft pick comes from this year, you may have that investment to be able to stick another guy in there at right tackle, or maybe that's our premium day one pick next year that you're able to plug that in because now you have a full season. You've now taken two years to give him a run at tackle. You put a Pro Bowl guy next to him. You know for sure what those options are, and now you can make an informed decision that, hey, we're not guessing here. We didn't pull the plug too soon. We feel like we still have talent and value here, but we need to kick it into guard, and we found out for the full season. Or your best-case scenario, hey, solidifying that presence next to him, he is our long-term answer at right tackle. So I think there's yeah. some domino effects of his value. And here's a question for you. 
Um, you know, having a guy like with his name and obviously his quality of play over the years on the trade market or eventually maybe even on the free agent market, how does that affect a guy like Quentin Spain? And that, then, you know, the other guards that are there, because obviously, I mean, one of the guys that we talked to behind the scenes that covers the Panthers is Billy M on Twitter. And uh, he's a really good film guy for them. And I asked him, you know, what he thinks uh, the value uh, trade wise for, you know, for Turner is, and he was thinking day three. And so me and you are like, well, I would <laughs> do a day three pick for him immediately. So yeah. what do you, how do you think that affects the free agent market? Um, when they're trading, you know, you're, they're throwing his name out there in the trade market or even in free agency. So it's going to be an interesting balance. So I, before seeing that, I had thrown out there that I thought it was one of those higher value but trade down scenarios. So I threw out Buffalo's second for Carolina's third and Trey Turner. So, which in reality kind of gives you know, the team there in Carolina, they get to wave the flag that, hey, look, we got a second rounder for Trey Turner, when in reality, Bean just dropped down 15 spots from 54 so, to like 69. like a Cordy Glenn type, mo- yes. type move. exact okay, same yeah. one. I like so that. So I think that's not that far off, really, of what it would take. You know, if someone tried to do that trade of going from 69 to 54, you'd probably be trading a fourth or a four, a fifth and a sixth to be able to do that kind of move. So it's about the same value-wise from that standpoint, but it looks better to Matt Rule and for them to wave to their fans. And then I think what it does is it shows that that value of anybody getting north of eight, nine, ten million dollars $10 isn't going to have a ton of, you know, play in the marketplace because you're not getting a premium there to be already be paying that so you know I I think it's going to be interesting to see where it comes but I think that it shows that there's some value overall and it's worth kicking the tires on this one one final point that came up from some guys on Twitter were you know the Carolina connection and and I'll say this is the perfect scenario where I think we're about at the end of that run these are the last guys that were drafted by Bean it's the last guys who were coached by McDermott and they just cleaned house with all the coaches that are there. So we have one last stretch here of any insider information or additional knowledge on people from Carolina. And then that's pretty much going to be gone because the staff is gone and anyone who's picked after this were picked after being left. So this is the last chance for them to leverage any inside information and a guy that they drafted who then immediately went to five straight pro bowls afterwards is probably one that's worth kicking the tires on. Yeah, it's definitely working in their favor. I know a lot of people use it as a negative. Well, why aren't we using it as a positive now? Because obviously they know this guy really well um, through the draft and all the background research they did when he was coming out. So, um, you know, I've, you know what? At this moment, the fact that we're just hearing about these trade rumors, that, that their name's being floated, I guarantee that being in his front office I already spoke with the personnel <laughs> and representatives because that's what happens in Indy. That's why you, these are all legit things that happen behind the scenes and because everyone's in one spot, you know, everyone's getting dinner and drinks afterwards after a long day. And, you know, they're floating these type of things out there. So, um, you know, it's a believable story and, you know, it's a credible, it's really someone they should kick the tires on because it's a position they could definitely upgrade. So appreciate you guys jumping on here real quick. Uh, Eric and I just thought this was worthwhile to be able to do a quick uh, emergency pod here to share all the information with you guys. Check, uh, Take a look at the uh, timeline, all the information we have out there. I shared some stuff on the contract extension, on the trade compensation. I uh, got some video kip, uh, clips that Eric uh, fed over as well. So take a look at everything we have going on. Eric, anything else for the people? No, it's good uh, Good to be back and talking some football, man. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to take a little break from watching all the college film because sometimes that gets boring. It's nice to reset your eye when you're looking towards, you know, possible guards or even tackles that they're, you know, maybe looking at in free agency or in, in the draft. So it's kind of nice to have a little news like this pop up and have me uh, jump back into the All-22 of the NFL rather than just uh, college, uh, which I've been obviously – in the, in the film room for a while now, the last few weeks. So uh, it's nice to kind of reset that eye and, and take a look at a good guard because he is, uh, he's worthy of kicking the tires on. Absolutely. So uh, speaking of that, make sure you guys are checking out the work from Eric, from Russell, from Christian, from Zach, from Brad, everybody that's out there. Uh, take a look at all the stuff they have going. We'll keep you guys uh, fed with good information all the way up through free agency and the draft. Keep a look out for uh, upcoming shows. We'll kind of keep giving you guys good information and uh, good interaction on Twitter. You've been listening to Cover One Buffalo, and we are out.